Hello, Ace Trig students. Uh, Mr. Meunier here, working through uh, some section 6.3 notes on some property of trig functions today. Uh, try to follow along with me here, and always feel free to send me messages with questions, comments, or concerns. Um, this front page of these notes is a lot of definitions of which you don't need to have memorized or concern yourself, which concern yourself with a great deal. Um, domains and ranges of your sines, cosines, tangents, secants, cosecants, and cotangents are in defined intervals. Uh, we will see these um, a lot clearer as we go into graphing later on this week and next week. But as of now, really the big thing you need to know is that the sine and cosine has a domain of all real numbers. Sine and cosine functions have a domain of all real numbers. That's one thing you should know. Uh, that basically means uh, there's not an X value that you can plug in that will mess up sine or cosine. They, they, they work everywhere. There's not gonna be any asymptotes or holes or breaks in that graph. So again, just have that down. And the rest of this, we will kind of unveil and see as we dive into graphing these curves a little bit later on. Um, another term is something that we've been doing without defining it, and that is periodic functions. These sine, cosine, these trig functions are periodic, which basically means they repeat themselves over and over and over again. If a function is periodic, it repeats itself on a regular interval. Uh, this is powerful. This is powerful mathematics for the world we live in because we live in uh, constant intervals. There's 24 hours in a day. We can count on that. There's seven days in a week. There's 60, 365 and a quarter days in a year. Um, so many things happen on a consistent basis and we can take those and manipulate them into a sine cosine problem to mathematically model what is happening. So again, they're periodic functions. And the period is how long it's gonna to take to repeat. So again, sine and cosine repeat every two pi, which we also know is 360 degrees. Every 360 degrees or every two pi, they repeat, they start over. Tangent also repeats every 360 or two pi, but if you dive a little closer, it's actually every 180 or pi. Tangent repeats a little bit more often because it's that slope value. Um, so every 180 or pi is when tangent will repeat itself. So again, periodic just means it repeats itself constantly. The period is how long it takes for that uh, repetition to occur. And then we went into this uh, when we unveiled our unit circle values last time. Uh, quadrants are important. All Students take calculus is the big saying here. All students take calculus. It's a false statement, but it works for our case. All means quadrant one, all are positive. Students just means S quadrant two, sign is positive. Take, T, take means in quadrant three, tangent is positive. In calculus, C, quadrant four, means cosine is positive. So again, that tells you your quadrants. We can answer questions like if the sine is greater than zero or a positive number, and the cosine is less than zero, a negative number, this is going to have to lie in the second quadrant. All right. Then, moving on. Fundamental trig identities. These are, um, for lack of a better term, an unmathematical term, these would be basic trig formulas um, that are useful and handy and can make things simpler to deal with. You actually already know most of these without realizing that you knew them. Uh, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but you'll probably see that here. Uh, the reciprocal identities or reciprocal formulas, uh, that would be like how sine and cosecant 
work together as reciprocals. Um, or we can say the cosecant of theta, where theta is just a variable of some sort that could be anything. It could be cosecant x or cosecant y. I'm just using theta is the reciprocal of sine, one over sine of theta. Like I said, that's a formula. The secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine. The cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tangent. So again, we knew those. We've kind of discussed those. We just haven't given it like a, a name of reciprocal identities until now. It also works the other way around too, and that the sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. The cosine is the reciprocal of secant. And the tangent is the reciprocal of cotangent. Those are reciprocals. Quotient. Uh, quotient means division. Uh, this is another one you kind of know without realizing you know it. Uh, we've talked about tangent, how tangent's a slope, and tangent is rise over run. Uh, well, rise is the y value and run is the x value. Uh, so in terms of tangent, trigonometry speak, the y value relates to the sine function so tangent is the sine, and the x value refers to the cosine function, cosine. So tangents, yeah, tangents a slope, it's rise over run, it's y over x, it's also the sine over the cosine. So you can always do tangent that way as well. And we've been doing that to define our unit circle values. And then cotangent would just be the other way around, where it's the reciprocal, it's the cosine on top of sine. And finally, our Pythagorean identities. Um, when you see Pythagorean, most people think Pythagorean theorem. That's true. Uh, Pythagorean theorem relates to a right triangle, always a right triangle, where you have A, B, and C is the hypotenuse of that triangle. And Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now that's great, but the trig stuff we've been doing has been related to a circle, a unit circle specifically. So if we put lay this on an xy axis and we draw a circle where a circle hits that point where the hypotenuse and the leg are intersecting with the edge of the circle, we have a completely different case now. Instead of a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we can say c is the hypotenuse. That's an r, or excuse me, c is the radius of our circle. The hypotenuse of that triangle is the radius of our circle. So c squared can be substituted in for r squared. A, that's the horizontal leg of my triangle, and horizontal is typically your x value. So we can say x squared plus, instead of b, b is the vertical leg, and vertical is your y value, y squared. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Well, that's the formula of a circle that we used last time. Uh, and that's just comes from Pythagorean theorem. And then to put a trig spin on this, x is your cosine. So we can say this is cosine squared plus y is your sine. So that's sine squared equal to the radius. And the radius on a unit circle is always 1. So 1 squared. Cosine squared plus sine squared will always equal one squared. Uh, if I clean that up, uh, a lot of times they put sine squared out in front. I'm gonna say sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. That is a Pythagorean identity. With this, uh, if you can see my little cursor mouse there, that squared symbol, that's typically where we write it for trig functions. They usually do not put it 
out here where the little uh, cursor marker is now, that would imply that the angle is squared, then do the sine of something. When you put the squared between, that means the sine of the angle, square that answer. And the same thing with the cosine. Now this is a big one. We should know that. You will know that. I'm gonna star the quotient identities here. We should know that. I think you already do without having a definition or a memorization. And you need to be aware of these reciprocals. So these I put stars with, you guys should sign a no. There's two other Pythagoreans I'm gonna show you that you do not need to memorize or utilize right now. Uh, if it's ever necessary, you'll have those provided to you in the form of a formula sheet of some sort. Uh, so again, these next two things, are offshoots of sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And you do need to know sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So if you take this one and you divide everything through by sine squared, you will end up with another formula. Uh, because sine squared divided by sine squared is a one plus Cosine squared over sine squared. Cosine divided by sine is cotangent. So cosine squared over sine squared is cotangent squared. One over sine squared. Well, over here on the left, one over sine is cosecant. One over sine squared would be cosecant squared. So this is another Pythagorean identity. And again, that one, you'll never have to memorize. Uh, if that's ever needed, I'll kind of have something for you that you can refer to. Uh, the, one, the ones that I've starred, you do need to know. And like I said, you've already, you already know most of those anyways. And last thing, if I go back to the original sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, and I divide through by cosine squared this time, you'll have a third identity. So sine squared over cosine squared plus cosine squared over cosine squared equals one over cosine squared. Uh, sine squared over cosine squared is going to be tangent squared. Sine over cosine is tangent from the quotients. So sine squared over cosine squared is a tangent squared. Cosine squared over cosine squared is one and one over cosine squared is secant squared. One over cosine is secant on the left side here. One over cosine squared is secant squared. And there's a third one of those. Again, those last two, you never need to memorize. All right, so those are all well and good, and they're really handy right now. They're, they're incredibly important when we get to chapter seven later on and really delve deeper into solving trigonometric e equations uh, simplifying things down. For us right now, it's gonna help us quickly answer short little expressions uh, without a calculator. So here, don't use a calculator. We have no idea what 35 degree angle values are. You should know your 30s, your 45s, your 60s, your 90s, things like that from your hand trick or memorizing those circles. 35, we don't know. Um, without a calculator, this is impossible. Even with a calculator, just plugging all that in would take some time. But if I have some basic formulas, it's a quick problem. One over cosecant, well, that's a reciprocal. Cosecant's the reciprocal of a sine. So I'm gonna change that into sine squared of 35. The reciprocal of the co um, sine is the reciprocal of cosecant plus a cosine squared 35. Now, if I have a sine squared plus a cosine squared of the same angle, and it's both 35 degree angles, that's always one, and we're done. Uh, B here, again, we could do this without formulas. Pi over three is a 60 degree angle, so we should know these values, but simplifying that's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna involve a lot of radicals and fractions. It's gonna get messy or we just realize that cosine over sine, same angle, pi over three, cosine over sine, 
always simplifies into cotangent. So it's cotangent pi over three minus cotangent pi over three. And if you subtract something from itself, you always get zero. So again, knowing these little things makes things a lot easier to work out and quicker to work out. Even if you had a calculator, plugging that in would take a lot longer than just knowing these basic formulas. Uh, one thing to point out, I'm gonna add this on. Um, I get this mistake sometimes. If you have sine squared of 20 plus cosine squared of 40, that does not equal one. Uh, for this to work, whoops, sorry guys. For this to work, the angles need to match. All of these formulas are based on the fact that you have the same angle involved. So no good there. Now, I guess if I had sine squared of 380 plus cosine squared of 20, we are okay there. I know the angles do not match, but 380 is way too big. So we should realize, let's subtract 360. If I subtract 360, the sine squared of 380 becomes the sine squared of 20. And then you have cosine squared of 20. Now the angles match. It's sine squared plus cosine squared. That's going to be a one. All right. Then last thing. Um, just one more. I'm not going to do both of these last examples. They're, they're kind of the same thing. Um, given that sine is negative two thirds and cosine is less than zero, find the exact value of the five remaining trig functions. So again, sine is negative two thirds, cosine is less than zero. Sine is a negative number, cosine is a negative number. Sine's a negative two thirds, cosine's just a flat out negative number. Those two things together tell me we're going to be in quadrant three. Quadrant three. Um, if I want to know the five trig functions, I got to know what the x values are, what the y values are, and this does not say unit circle. So I also need to know what is the r value? What is the radius going to be? Well, we actually have two of those. Um, if sine is negative two thirds, we should know that sine is the y value. This doesn't say the unit circle, so that y value is being divided by the radius value. Our y is negative two, our r is positive three, x is unknown. So we can go and figure out what is the x value. And we can always find a missing piece because this is based on a circle where x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Um, I can solve this and say x squared plus negative two squared equals three squared. y is negative two, radius is positive three. Uh, x squared plus four is nine x squared is five. Take the square root of each side. When we do that, you always need a plus or minus in front of that radical. X is plus or minus radical five. And we did this the other day with um, section 6.2, finding a radius. And I talked about how the radius is always positive. So the plus or minus really didn't matter if you for forgot it, but here it does. Um, since we are in the third quadrant, the x value is gonna be a negative number. So we wanna choose the negative of that, the negative radical five, not the positive, because we're in quad three, because you're in Q3. So now we're in good shape. We have all three. Uh, we can start to find our other trig values. So sine is given as negative two thirds. Cosine is gonna be the X value of negative radical five divided by the radius of three. Tangent is gonna be the Y value of negative two divided by the X value of negative radical five. 
uh, two negatives become a positive, two over radical five. Always clean up the radical in your denominator, uh, multiply by that value, and you're gonna get a two radical five over five. Um, the secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so three over negative radical five. Clean that up, it's a negative three radical five over five. Uh, the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so that's a negative three halves. And the cotangent, so our last one here, is the reciprocal of tangent. We could flip this final answer that I'm kind of circling right now with my cursor. That's going to put the radical in the denominator. That's bad. So let's work smarter, not harder. If I come to what I have in brown here that I'm circling, we can flip that and not be in bad shape. So we're going to have radical 5 over 2. And those are the five trig functions. All right, guys, hopefully that went okay. Uh, if you're having issues, pop in to um, let me know. Pop into the Zoom office hours, send me messages. Uh, over this, let's, this is section 6.3 again. I have it listed out in Schoology. I'll put it here, section 6.3, uh, page 393, number 11 to 33 odd. 53 to 57 odd, and 77 to 83 odd. Have this for next class. Um, basically, right now, submit a picture of it to me through Schoology. Um, so, by next class. All right, I hope everybody's doing well. Hang in there.